top tip, don't wear roll-ups to the barbers or you'll be emptying hair out of your trousers for days. Hi guys, so I thought you might want to see me open a little package. Um, I know what this is and I'm very excited for it. So, let's see. It is. Oh my god, I can't get it. The galaxy in the ground within. And. Well, let's see. It is. A signed copy. <laughs> um, because I'm a nerd and I'm really happy to have the final one and it's also kind of their suite. Um, yeah, so really looking forward to reading this in my QPP over Discord. I just realised I haven't shown you the actual book without the dust cover and that's very very important for me. So, oh, look at that. <laughs> so purple, I love it. I've never seen a book this purple before. Uh, <laughs> I am highly entertained. So yeah, there we go. The final reveal. Um, go and buy Becky Chambers stuff because it's absolutely given me life through this particular time period. This has also just been a day of deliveries. So I got some Lucy and Yak trousers, which I will give you a sneak peek of, I guess. Oh, Lucy and Yak trousers. <laughs> um, I got some Lucy and Yak trousers, and also from Lucy and Yak, they do these mesh bags for your like food produce. So now I don't have to play like fruit roulette with the cashier at the supermarket, like rolling loose fruit down at me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm weirdly excited to use these tonight. And we got a small bookcase, um, which we have to patiently wait to put together after food shopping because I guess that takes priority, I guess. So I will show you the finished product um, later and yeah. So if you didn't just see that, uh, this whole thing just folded out in one and doesn't even need anything to put it together. I'm really, really impressed. Also, oh fuck. today which I thought I would share opening with you so oh. well that was disappointing much better <laughs> so this is recommended by Savage Reads and when I heard about it I was like this sounds like something I want so it's The Oscillations by Kate Fox. I've not read any of their poetry before, but uh, they started writing this collection just before, like, they hit um, the UK. And so there is a section of the before and a section of after, which I thought, yeah, I want to read. I know that there's going to be, like, loads of stuff out there in future, but... I do kind of want to read something. I know some people want to like avoid it completely, but yeah, 
I think this will be an interesting way to kind of mark it. Also, also, I'm going to get my hair cut tomorrow and I'm very excited. I'm going for something a little unexpected, maybe. Uh, I'm a little bit scared, but we'll see if it suits me and if I like it. So, yeah. Wish me luck. So, I'm just about to go and get my hair cut. So, my hair is looking quite nice today. <laughs> um, I'm also going to read a bit of this, so I'm going to listen to um, Cusk on the way, Rachel Cusk, um, on the metro, on the way, and then I'm going to read this after I get my hair cut on the beach, because the barbers is right near the beach. Um, also, one, we have to love the French flaps, love them so much. Also, I just opened this up and the dedication is dedicated to all my fellow neurodivergent thinkers. Here's to a more accepting world. And I had no idea that Kate Fox was autistic. So that makes me even more excited to read this book. So I will report back with some new hair to show off as well. Croissant. Oh, Cathy. This is the first time I've sat down on grass and genuinely I don't know how long. Definitely over a year. And it just feels so good. So good. And with a sea view as well. So I've thus far read the first half of Kate Fox's The Oscillations, which is the after section, and she just conjures some really beautiful little metaphors and images and depicted things that I didn't think that I would have forgotten, but I completely did. So there was a, a, a gorgeous poem about the cairns, um, so the, the stacks of rocks that people built up on beaches everywhere, which made me feel, I don't know, fuzzy inside, and I didn't realise that I could feel like that about something that happened in the past year. Um, there was also a really lovely few lines in one poem. It was a metaphor using clocks, and I just really enjoyed it, so I'll just read that to you. You, constant as a mantle clock, keeping track of the interval and my fatigue, seeing me, a Swiss watch full of moving parts, overwhelmed now by whatever entered us, we have both stepped out of time. And I think that's just, I don't know, it just really made me feel this past year in my bones time does not mean anything right now and yeah it's kind of nice to just see these things reflected back I'm really glad that I bought this book I do really hope that that doggo can pick up the stick but oh he just peed on it okay fair enough poem seems quite apt right now. It's called Returns. The plague books won't be in yet, but the dystopia section will be well stocked. And you usually want the two meters of space to browse anyway. This sh last shop I came to on purpose, a pilgrimage. Then, the assistant said they still had customers. Her son had been sent home for coughing and P.E. 
So there's where I'll return first. Enjoy the full shelves, calming lines, the glossy wooden lectern, the smell of new. The rash of woodcut covers in striking monochromes, the imprints from London, Chicago, New York. I spent fifty pounds I no longer had last time. We'll spend another fifty next. Feeling I'm preserving an ecology, a sort of home. So happy for this normality, my eyes will fill so the titles are blurred. But reading? Reading, no. Can hardly take in a word. My favourite medieval herb garden a couple of months ago, and now. Oh, it makes me so happy. I mean, half of the green is weeds right now, but it is spring. Because I cannot resist, this might be the result of a second coffee trip this week. with the finished bookshelf in the light of day. I'm sure you'll be grateful for the uh, better quality. Um, also with my new hair, uh, obviously you saw the video of me with the like fringe and everything, but I don't currently have a hair dryer uh, for which to tame my cowlicks, so it's not happening. Uh, but I'm very much enjoying this uh, poodly do uh, that I've got going on right now. It is especially poodly this morning um, because I've just done it and it's not a chance to like get shaggy yet. Um, but definitely enjoying my hair, definitely enjoying like having to do my hair this like in the mornings. Um, otherwise I will look like a pineapple. Um, but yeah, it's really enjoyable just having to groom myself in the morning, like having a reason to sit in front of a mirror, just take that time with myself um, after such a strange year. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely enjoying it. Having some shorter hair again. Um, but we aren't here to talk about my hair. We are here to talk about my books and have a little bookshelf tour. I'm just gonna have to deal with the sun being uh, the sun uh, for the moment <laughs> while I show you the first shelf. The first book is Panty. I think it might be one of the first Tilted Access books and I got it ages ago and I really should read it because it just seems like such a interesting book. It's about sort of Indian life, like contemporary India and all of the things that that means for a woman. Translated fiction, like, it's just got everything going for it um, and I really need to read it. Um, we've then got American Psycho, which I'm considering reading with the current book that I'm reading, which is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I kind of want to read them side by side. I meant to read that in university, but I didn't. I love the film though. <laughs> Geek Love, I've just read. I have a lot to say on it. I think I might need to do an individual video on it because there's just so much going on that I just want to talk about and unpick for myself. Got Franzen, Not Red, that's my partner's. Most Precious of Cargoes, which you've seen. Uh, Leonard and Hungry Paul. Convenience Store Woman. A Helenoia Yemi, who you've seen. I haven't read Convenience Store Woman, I'm interested too. Ali Smith, Love. 
Sugar Bane, also have loved. Um, and I was just thinking about it the other day, it just sort of popped up into my head because it's such a, a vivid creation of like working class Scotland. Um, and yeah, I just really connected to it. So yeah, on to the next shelf. Just so you know, I did realise, um, I didn't say, so these aren't all of my books. I've been staying somewhere that isn't my home for like a while. We're actually about to move as well. This is all the books that we've just had with us across this time and we finally got a space to put them and oh my god, it just feels so good to just have somewhere to look and see all of our books together. I think they should be prescribed. Uh, for medical use bookshelves because it's just been such a lovely thing to see every day. Shelf two, we've got Douglas Adams, we have Becky Chambers. I still don't have the first one because the first one was just um, lent to me, uh, so I need to buy that so then I can uh, lend all of the books to everyone else so they can see. Once in Future Witches, which I've also talked about in some videos. Most of this is my partner's, so Starless Sea, Gathering of Ravens I bought for my partner for Christmas. We've both read Terry Pratchett and are going to continue reading for Terry Pratchett. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Um, and then the um, Northern Lights series, uh, also my partner's. So yeah, this is kind of the sci-fi fantasy section. There is The Last Wish Witcher on the shelf below because it couldn't fit in. Apparently we've read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, maybe a little bit of uh, escapism. So you're not going to have my face in this shop, but um, you're just going to have to deal with it. I'm here. Here, yeah, look at this, my hands. I'm here. We have uh, World War Z, which is my partner's um, help. I actually got uh, this at a, a talk in London, like a book uh, talk with uh, Simon Amstel and Ruby Wax, which uh, is a pair I didn't expect to be put together. My friend really loves uh, Simon Amstel, so we've been to London a couple of times to see stuff with him. Still haven't read it, need to read it. Moneyland, my partner's read it, I have not, The Ethical Slut. Both me and my partner have read It's a Good start a book I would say for non-monogamy. I wouldn't say it's like the best one I've read but definitely a good start if you are new to it. Also my partner's The First World War. Not sure if I would read it. I got kind of bored of history with all of the World War talk but maybe I should just give it a go at some point. Who knows, it's a big part of our history so I understand why it does get taught. Audrey Lord, The Master's Tools. I became obsessed with the quote, oh, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house um, when I was a teenager. And I just think it's, I just wanted to read what it came from. I don't know if I've read it yet. So, well, I obviously don't remember it. So I probably haven't. So I should definitely read it. It'll be a quick one. Intern Nation, I should probably just get rid of because I bought it so long ago and I thought it would be interesting to read but now it's probably just going to feel really out of date. It's just one of those non-fiction books where it'll just fall out of date really quickly. How to Write by Gertrude Stein. I started to try and read this at the start of <laughs> like March last year and it is so heavy. There is so much going on. It is very Gertrude Stein. I need to sit down on it when my head has more space in it. But I'm very interested in reading it because I, well, I've been called Gertrude Stein before uh, just because I'm a bit of a, not ruthless editor, but I'm more than happy to um, share my thoughts on my friend's writing. Penguin, book of the prose poem. I've kind of flipped through this. I wanted to learn a bit more about prose poetry. It's one of those sort of elusive kinds of poetry where you don't always, I don't know, People don't know much about it, really. I don't think. I don't know that much about it. We've got Deaf Republic by Ilya Kaminsky. It was very good. It um, deserved the hype it's, it had. I think you could read this and still be very, very interested, even if you aren't a poetry reader normally. It's got a narrative that runs all the way through, um, which I think would keep a lot of uh, non-poetry readers interested. Um, 
I recently dug this out of storage. Uh, Se- Seasonal Disturbances by Karen McCarthy Wolf. Um, I really love this poetry collection. Um, I need to read more of Karen McCarthy Wolf's stuff. It's one of these ones I just picked off the shelf when I was browsing a bookshop and I'm really glad I did because yeah I just love her style and I just wanted to read it again uh, especially with the kind of seaside feel. I live near the sea now so I wanted to kind of reflect on it now having spent more time with the sea on a regular basis. And now we're gonna get on the floor with the last shelf. We're on the floor. (laughs) So first we have a Giles Christian book. I don't think I'm ever going to read Giles Christian. I don't think he sounds like my cup of tea. My partner reads him and occasionally tells me things. I think it's this guy anyway. I think he occasionally tells me bits from like random sex scenes and it's fucking hilarious but uh that's obviously not what I'm looking for. (laughs) Uh, a net for small fishes. I'll show you properly. Net for small fishes uh, by Lucy Yago. My partner bought this. Uh, neither of us had read it yet, but I think I'm going to read it with my QPP. I'm really excited. I mentioned it in one of my um, anticipated reads videos. It's quoted as the Thelma and Louise of the 17th century. Yes. Also says gut wrenching. So I guess I'm ready to have my guts wrenched. Uh, Here is the very small classics section with Jane Eyre and a good chonkin Oscar Wilde collection. I think it's got a nice little thing on the front. Then we have the graphic. Oh my god, this is very cramped here on the floor. Now we have uh, Jojo's two and three. Uh, I have read one. Uh, I need to get around to these bad boys because everyone seems a bit obsessed with, uh, I think it's on... Netflix. Um, Everyone's a bit like crazy about Jojo's and I did enjoy just the absurdity of it so I think it would be a fun one to keep reading. Uh, And this is a whopper. Um, This is Rusty Brown. It's a huge huge uh, graphic novel. It's kind of a collection of the um, what's the guy's name? It's so beautifully graphic that I can't find the uh, the illustrator's name. Whopping great book and it's kind of a collection of all of his um, like work across time. I don't think it's all of it but it's like of this specific place and family. Um, So that was quite an interesting read. Sadly this book is now a testament of what happens when you don't keep your books on a proper bookshelf as it is slightly warped um, which makes you very sad because it's obviously a big big heavy book and it needs taken care of so I'm hoping that it can be sort of righted with a good amount of time sitting on a shelf properly but we all just have to see but yeah uh, that is it for the bookshelf tour uh, now uh, just me next to Giles over here um (laughs) so I hope you enjoyed that but I am gonna be moving soon so you'll be having many many more bookshelf tours to come and bookshelf organizing uh as well to come uh which I'm gonna do in a very different way so keep your your eyes and ears peeled for that (laughs) also I feel like this little bit here makes you feel like a little anglerfish like looking for some underwater books or something.